It's time for the Halloween episode, and... What? I, I, I wear a costume every week of the year, and so now I'm, I'm dressed like one of you people. I, I look normal now. See? See? This is, this is timely, right? And yes, I do have a Halloween-themed movie to show this year, and honestly, I had to double-check several times to see if any of my co-workers have touched upon this movie. It baffles me that I'm the first one on that guy with the glasses to talk about this movie. How? How is that possible? This movie, to put it in best worst movie terms, is holy fucking shit bad! Don't believe me? You can see YouTube reviews for it from Good Bad Flicks, CK Horror Man, and more. But if I'm doing my part in giving this movie the legendary bad movie reputation that it deserves, well, then I've contributed something to this world. Oh, the movie is called Hack O Lantern? Funny, I just thought it was the name of the director. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's a JAG film. I guess that means old people will like it. And I'm not exactly sure, but I think the theme music is humming along with the theme to kick ass -ia. Wait, should I know that? Does that exist as a movie in my continuity? Hack O' Lantern, for those of you who don't know, is a satanic cult film from 1988, and you can tell because it's actually starring a coven of Larry's. From the pyramids of Egypt to the trees of Iowa, there's no telling where a pickup truck carrying pumpkins will show up. Hey, I see Costas Mandalore's doing a bit of delivering in his saw downtime. You better hurry up, little Tommy, or you'll be late for the Silver Spoons audition. Happy Halloween, Tommy. <laughs> Nothing can keep me from seeing you on this, the grandest day of the year. Grandpa, why are you saying it like that? And Grandpa's got something very special for you. It's my dick. Something for me? Because I'm special? Yes, Tommy. Because you are very, very special. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay, Grandpa, I get it. That's a fantastic Victor Salva costume. He gives him a pumpkin for the time-honored tradition of throwing pumpkin guts at your little sister. By the way, why is Grandpa only like five years older than the mother? Trick or treat, give me all your candy or I'll blow your head off. Roger, would you learn how to talk nicely to your sister? The hell is with these brats? Suddenly, Grandpa is the most normal one in the family. Look at the mother's reaction to Tommy receiving the pumpkin as a gift. <laughs> now, was that really fucking necessary? Just talk it over with your husband. It's Halloween! Damn it, woman. Your father needs more than just a warning. There's something about Tommy. He's got some kind of hold over him, and I don't like it. This movie's sort of like Troll 2, only more... This movie's just like Troll 2. Tommy's dad looks for Grandpa, but stumbles upon the secret meeting of the Red Riding Hoods. This makes Dad so mad, he begins to poke Grandpa right in Steven Seagal's beads. Oh man, he just whacked the tag off the back of his jacket. And it ain't a cheesy Halloween movie unless someone is slowly turning into Tim Curry. Nice. Apparently they were only ten feet away from Tommy's window. Eh, I'm sure it's nothing. Dad'll handle it. Amazing sandwich wrapper action! Look, he's hypnotizing the soundtrack to switch to something more appropriate. The hell? Did he just turn the movie into Hard Rock Zombies? As you can see, it's years later, but still 1988, and after all these years, Grandpa still hasn't taken an acting class. Tonight you will learn what power is. You will know your own strength. Whoa, 
Well, you gotta hand it to Grandpa. He is still hanging out with the boy, even though the kid is of age now. And I'm not sure, but I think Tommy is trying to give us the signal that he wants out of this movie. Why did that just happen? Yes, I wonder if the cult spawn of Satan is evil. We need to give him the shifty-eyed dog glance just so we're all clear. Faye Dunaway tries her best to convince Grandpa to stay away. I have plans for Tommy. He will be a leader. Nambla need a new president? You know, it's been 13 years. I'm sure you could have just shot the old man and no one would have convicted you. Especially after it appears that he raped you on your wedding day. You cannot stop what is meant to be. You have no power here. Wow, this movie isn't just good. It's final sacrifice good. Happy Halloween, Mrs. Grindle. Wait, did you say... Grindle? Anyway, the younger sister is, uh, holy shit, her vagina's trying to escape. Oh, here, dummy, dummy. Come. Uh, hang on, I don't understand this prank. What the hell was making it move in the first place? Now I want you to stand here and look at me naked, because we're chicks, right? Let's not forget that this is Halloween, so what are these characters going as? I left my costume in your room. I am going as Princess Di. Di? Ugh, could you have put that in a slightly different way? But nothing could stop Tommy from going the full Eric Freeman. Let's see, uh, the Silver Shamrock theme has to be around here somewhere. How else will I know how many more days till Halloween? I can hear nothing anymore. What is this now? I'm sorry, this Beavis and Butthead all of a sudden? Time for the music video break? Hey, you leave Pam Greer out of this movie. You're the devil's son. Are you under the impression that I wouldn't have predicted that had you not put it in the lyrics of a shitty hard rock song? Say, she's the perfect link for a circle jerk. This is too fucking much. My god. There is such a thing as giving me too much material. Look at this. The Caribbean scene from Blues Brothers 2000 made more sense. If you ask me, this is the best duet since Brian Adams and Tina Turner sang It's Only Love. Either that, or this is the opening sequence from Zombie 4 After Death. Well, at least she didn't eat a bat. <laughs> that could cause rabies. I see why that scene was necessary. It was to summon the Great Pumpkin. Oh good, it's Machine Gun Brother from earlier in the film. He's gonna jam Michael Vincent the hell out of this role. More so than Brigitte Nielsen here, who's doing the job she did before and after she got famous. Hey baby, care to be extras in Return of the Living Dead with me? Grandpa, what are you doing here? I come by the store to pick up some candles for your ceremony. This is a huge disappointment. I expect better quality acting out of the guy who played the mayor in Dolomite. Don't say. You're gonna shrivel up like a prune. Oh good, I was wondering what these two were up to. Brian and I could play trick or treat. <laughs> Your trick, his treat. Lucky Brian. Brian who? The fuck? You're not in this scene. Get the hell out of here. Vera seems to have a nice little friend there. I wish Vera and Tommy and you would stay together. We all need each other. Okay, that was about three inflections there, lady. Pick one and fucking stick to it. And is that a dead-end drive-in poster on his wall? If he wanted a Brian Trenchard Smith poster, I figured he would have gone with one of the Jason Blade movies. Why don't you do something meaningful with your life? Do not bother him when he is going full Eddie and the Cruisers. Naturally, the younger brother is worried, so Tommy just explains everything to him. Now I know why Mom's so worried about you spending time with Grandpa. 
That's a fucking understatement. The movie does get a little sad when the mother visits her husband's grave and flashes back to the time when he fucked her to death. Plus, I'm starting to get the feeling that they keep forgetting there's a camera present. I think you should pay him your respects today. Okay, well, Miss Strindle, we'll walk through the cemetery on our way to the party hall, okay? Pfft, way to buzzkill Halloween with talks of death, Mom. Meanwhile, right before Roxette is about to go on tour, tragedy strikes. Well, not really. She does get a little naked first. I'm Lady Godiva. Wanna play my horsey? I don't know what that means. Does that mean I get to fuck you? Because if so, then the answer is... maybe. Oh, I guess it means stick a fucking fork in your neck. She should have been a lot more specific when talking to Ernest Borgnine from The Devil's Reign. Don't mind him. He's gonna go be awkward somewhere else now. Come on, Grandpa. You came here looking for Tommy. Nah, I just come by because I wanted to give a little something to my favorite little gal. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care who he fucks. I must say, you are certainly growing into a very tempting young lady. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like her too. You got some kind of problem, mister? God, I'm rooting for Satan because even he wouldn't like this movie. Yeah, um, Grandpa, this is Brian, my boyfriend. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. Nice to meet you, sir. Not sure that's the right attitude. <laughs> now that I know you're related, well, that makes this less creepy. Roger Drendel, my grandson in uniform. Oh, will you stop with the fucking exposition dialogue? I know he's your grandson, and I know he's a cop. Well, okay, maybe just some more exposition dialogue. Oh, well, uh, I can tell you've been thinking about that, Roger. All right, pretty damn ingenious. After all, you're my brother. Roger the cop shows up, mainly just to hit on his sister's friend. And it goes rather well, because in the cutaway, they leave holding hands. Uh, since I'm done here, you want to take me into custody? <laughs> and they're gonna fuck. Uh-oh, Bruce Springsteen looks pissed about something. Looks like his sister Pamela was caught with one of the counselors. And I think the music seems much more loud and pissed off than the actors. He's gonna go all Martin Cove on their asses, and, um, okay, haggle with the Jets too, I guess. This dude is so pissed off, it's time for a temper tantrum in a cemetery. I haven't seen whining like that since Big Joey Faculi took away my ball in the third grade. Damn that, Tommy. That son of a bitch. The hell? Is he gonna rape him? I sure hope he doesn't fall into a... Oh, how the hell did he fall into that giant-ass grave in broad daylight? Hey, you put that skull back or you'll cause Confederate zombies to rise. Fuck. I think this cult might be onto something. They made a death scene disappear and reappear in a matter of seconds. Ooh, how's the love story going? I don't think it's me you have to worry about, Roger. I think you should keep an eye on Beth. She said she wanted to stop and pick up some passion fruit or something. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but don't get too passionate. Hey guys, guess what? The cast of Woodchipper Massacre is laughing at you. And mom, you've got a piece of bub on the side of your face, just letting you know. I don't really care where this is going, but I'm sure this will be better than Paranormal Activity 4. The hour of Satan has arrived. That thing in the wall is judging you. A nice shirt. Is this a cult worshipping Al Borland? Nudity is usually fine, but when it involves cult members, that's a sign something bad is probably gonna happen. Not all girls let you poker in the ass. Too bad the local police have better things to do, like scaring kids. Lucky he's not party cop or he would have taken their candy. Trouble, huh? I think you're in grave trouble. Oh, really? I'm gonna have to cut this love scene short because of that. I've uh, never considered myself dead meat. Dead or alive, they'll rise to my command. 
I have the power. What? You've got more puns? That one wasn't enough to kill the mood? Say, baby, you got me all stiff. You're making me cremate in my pants. Aw, oh, who's a naughty girl who doesn't do nudity? Pfft, this Halloween party is so lame, I almost wish Zoe Tamerless from Miss 45 came in to shoot up the place. What are you guys doing out here? Didn't you see the stripper in there? <laughs> yeah, we saw the stripper. That's why we're outside. This is a really weird part of the movie, where a character just breaks into stand-up comedy out of nowhere. And I wasn't kidding earlier when I said the grandpa was the mayor from Dolomite. Apparently, he has a thing for appearing in movies with out-of-place stand-up comedy. The little memo, right underneath the naked girl's picture. Because the things they say about themselves, they're not quite accurate, are they? I mean, they say things, for example, like, I'm just a conservative girl. <laughs> well, Jenna Jameson did endorse Romney. <laughs> Stick around, I got binders full of topical jokes. You ever been at the wrong place at the wrong time? You know, like, a, a turkey. Three days before Thanksgiving. You run out of Halloween jokes already? You've moved right along to Thanksgiving? I can't tell if this is part of your act or if your own brain is heckling you. <laughs> Oh, thank God, he's dead. Can't say I expected that scene, but it's not like nothing else in this movie comes out of nowhere. Wow. Can I have this? No. It's the only one I have of the three of us together. Makes sense, I guess. Hey, wait, why did you want to take that picture with you in the first place? So, tell me, where did you guys do it? Too much information! It's her brother! Right there. Behind that tombstone. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Now you're actually pinpointing the location where you fucked? Why? You gonna show her the condom you use next? Oh, I get it. It's so she can find that dead body from earlier. Vera, don't. I didn't put that. Vera, don't. Yeah, I didn't. Vera, I didn't put anything there. Vera, don't. Don't, Vera. Stop. Stop, Vera. That was smart of him, by the way, to bury the body above the ground. Now, now, we have a party to get to. Please, baby, please. Mm, on second thought, let's skip the party. Jesus, this is the weirdest version of Russian roulette I've ever seen. And oh yeah, she's so adamant about getting revenge on Tommy that she gets captured five minutes later. And wasn't she supposed to be going as Princess Diana? Could've fooled me, she's a dead ringer for Sean Young! And if only anyone had any evidence of Tommy's satanic affiliations, all of this could've been stopped! Unless it's just by Tommy himself. The end. Well, no, not really. In the kingdom of hell, we are your family, the disciples of Satan. With characters like this, I never know which lines to keep and which ones to leave on the cutting room floor, because really, they're all pretty gold. Wait, Tommy freed his sister and then stuck around? What did he think was gonna happen? Well, eventually he does leave once he gets a stern lecture from Grandpa. Shall we bring him back? No. Well, that settles that debate. Meanwhile, in an establishing shot from a Miami Vice episode, don't worry, she's just doing this to make you feel like less of a man. And is it working? Hey, wanna be my geisha? Wait, I wanna give you a good old sweet and sour porkin'. There were Thanksgiving jokes earlier in the movie, so might as well start hanging up Christmas decorations. I always thought it was Tommy. But who could ever believe Grandpa could do something like this? Yes, who could have known that Grandpa fucking creepy, who's a devil worshipper, and who raped his fucking daughter, just might be kind of untrustworthy. 
Oh, and some death scene started happening, you know, because there's a party going on with young people, and even though I don't know why any of them are getting killed, someone has to have their dress tightened to death and then stabbed. Maybe something more interesting is going on in the cop section of the story. Anybody here? Right on, boys. Thanks for checking in. Hey, it's nice to know that even though her boyfriend was murdered and her grandpa tried to kill her, she still made it to the party. All you gotta do is fix the hair and makeup a little, and you'll be set to dance the night away. God, what's wrong with her? Some people just can't handle their punch. Really? Of all the people at this party who should recognize a dead body, you think it'd be those two? Especially since you are now one of the dead bodies. Beth! Come on, Beth. Oh my god, you are so fucking stupid. I'm honestly surprised you eventually realized she was dead. Tommy comes in to fight away Grandpa Lucifer, and since Grandpa is an old man, and Tommy is fucking Thomas Ian Griffith, the fight doesn't last very long. Roger. Oh, and somehow that's gonna lead to a plot hole in outer space. See? It starts with the fact that the one doing the killing was the mother. Oh, now, now. I'm sure it'll explain everything to us. <laughs> I only wanted to keep my family. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> whoa, whoa, ma'am. That actually wasn't a bad line read. You need to cut that shit out in Echo Lantern. So why was the mother so fucking adamant to stay away from the cult, even though she seems to be part of the cult and is killing anything that moves, even if they don't have anything to do with her and her family? Who cares, right? She dies, so the movie's over. Or, well, not before this stinger of an ending. We welcome the night. Oh my god, sequel! That never got made. This movie is the passions of Halloween movies. A movie so over the top in its execution and delivery, even Claudio Fergasso would have told them to tone it down. And why is it called a hack-o-lantern? A jack-o-lantern played into one scene where one is crushed, and another where one is lit. That's it. Uh oh, the original title was Halloween Night. Hey, okay, okay, hack-o-lantern was the better title. The movie was brought to us by director Jag Mundra, an Indian director who sadly passed away in 2011. And, you know, I gotta say, any old Tom, Dick, and Harry can make something forgettable or mediocre. But it takes someone with something to make a film like Citizen Kane on the one end of the spectrum, and on the other, hack -O lantern Because whether we're talking about greatness or badness, this is the, uh, the top tier here, and that's not an easy thing to do, or in some cases, intentional. So, the man left his dent in the world, and you can't take that away from him, nor am I gonna try. <laughs> oh, and, uh, happy Halloween. So what does Nora Bennington have that I don't have? For one thing tattoo on her butt.